Psalms chapter 29, a Psalm of David. Now this is a song, this is your hymnal in, the, in, the, in your Bible. If you want songs for church, put this to good music. Why well, not good music, but good instruments. And the Bible tells you what instruments you can have. And with that, this psalm is I'm going to say what I think I, you know, not what I think, but what the Bible says, but there's not much I can add to this psalm, what I'm trying to say. It's a psalm of David. Give unto the Lord. That's interesting. That's self-explanatory. A lot of people don't want to hear the message, you know, give, give, give. That's what all preachers preach about is giving, giving, giving. But give unto the Lord, O ye mighty. Give unto the Lord glory and strength. It is not just money. The person that, that wants to hold on to, to his wallet and all that, he's going to think, give, 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 money, money, money. No, give God glory and give God strength. Make God happy. Please, God, strength. How do you give God strength? You give him the testimony. You tell others about him. You strengthen other people through God. God can be strengthened through the brethren. The Bible says we're to, we're to weep with those that weep. We're to rejoice with those rejoice. That's strengthening. That's strengthening God's people, the family of God. The Bible says that we are children of God if we're born again. And God's strength is when we work in a unity, which is lacking today. Give on to the Lord the glory. So we're about giving. Do unto his name. That's not money. I have several places written in my Bible, and uh, let's see, we're read, we're today reading. It says, I, I've got this several places in my Bible. It says, always give God the glory. Repent when I do not. And that's, i got that in the top of my Bible in several places. That's to remind me and make sure that everything that happens, God gets, gets, gets the glory for it and not myself. Everything that happens, I'm to, I'm to myself to think of God and myself to tell other people about God. And his name, and his glorious name, and I'm never to give. I'm never to give the glory to myself or take God's glory, because if you do, thou have stolen. It's nothing that you have done. It's all what God has done, and it's a sin to take God's glory. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. I don't know what David's talking about there, unless he's talking about the tabernacle. Where God is, the presence of everything that's that's in the holy and the most holy place is gold, which no one's seen but the priest. No one's seen but the the, the holies of holies, the the uh, the high priest. And which when he walks in there, I see the two things. It's completely dark, but the Bible says God is light. How can he walk in a dark place and put the blood upon the mercy seat unless there's light from God there? And what what a beautiful light that would be. If that is so, we don't know. But what kind of beauty was it when Jesus is on the Mount of Transfiguration and he and he's before the, the apostles, the Bible says in a white that no fuller can, can clean, and it, it was shining. Now we're going to get into the voice of the Lord here. The voice of the Lord is upon the water. I don't know. The, the God of glory thundereth. The Bible likens his voice as thunder. The Lord is upon many waters. The voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord in Genesis chapter 1, let there be light, and there was light. The voice of the Lord is full of majesty. It's a voice unlike any other voice in the world. It's a clean, pure voice. It is royalty. It's dignity. It's God. The voice of the Lord breaketh the cedars. Yea, the Lord breaketh the cedars of, the, of Lebanon. And I've read the commentaries and the, the lightning hits the tree. Oh, that doesn't say lightning. Lightning is not a voice. One mentioned a uh, hurricane or uh, forest kind of winds and... I guess if God says to the cedar, be broken, it's going to break. <laughs> what God says is so. 
Man doesn't think so. He changes the voice of God over and over and over. He maketh them also to skip like calf. There's a remarkable thing about the trees in the Bible. It says in one place the trees shall clap their hands. Now I believe, and you can put me over the fire, I believe that's going to happen literally. I think when the Lord comes in the new earth and all that, I think the trees are going to, they're going to praise God and their limbs are going to clap. I think Wizard of Oz has a cheap imitation. And she takes an apple off one of the trees, and the tree smacks it in the hand. Now, I, you don't have to believe that, but I believe that the trees are literally going to clap their hand, and skip around and stuff like that. I don't know. Lebanon and Siron, or Sirion, or Sirloin, like a young unicorn. Bible says they're unicorns. Why is it you can't have a unicorn in a Bible, but you can have one in New Age religion? That's all I can say about it. I don't know. The voice of the Lord div divideth the flames of fire. I don't know. I don't know everything in the Bible. I just don't know. I don't know what David's singing about. Maybe there's people out there who do know what this is about. I don't. The voice of the Lord shaketh the wilderness. Earthquake? Don't know. The Lord shaketh the wilderness of Kadesh. Well, Kadesh Barnea, that, just south of that, is where the children of Israel were, and they were to go in the land, and they didn't. The voice of the Lord maketh the hinds to cow to give birth wouldn't it be interesting if the voice of the Lord would pronounce the child to be when to be born the water broke well maybe it's God and discovers the forest Now, the voice of the Lord, you can find in Genesis 3, 4, it says the voice of the Lord in the cool of the day came looking for Adam. And Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy 5, 25 says you're to obey the voice of the Lord. Uh, no, excuse me, Deuteronomy 5, 25 is when they're at the, uh, the, the mountain there and God speaking to the Israelites. It was such a voice that they didn't want to hear any longer. They didn't want to hear any more. They were afraid. It's a voice to be afraid of. And in his temple, does everyone speak of his glory? Now, there's a thing. There's, there's seven voice of the Lord. And Revelation speaks about the seven spirits of the Lord. There's something to it. The Lord sitteth on the flood. Well, the universe is spoken as waters. Verse 3, the voice of the Lord is upon the waters. When he's in heaven, he speaks, and his voice carries out through the universe. In verse 10, he's sitting on it, that is ice. The Lord sitteth, capital K, king forever. And to think that America as a Christian nation didn't want to have anything to do with a king. All we did was repeat Israel. We don't want God as our, our king. We want, a, we want a ruler. But we don't want it like England. We want to have our own personal kind of ruler. Well, if you want to be a Christian Bible nation, Daniel was a president. There were three presidents. Daniel was over them, but only one of them was good, Daniel. The other two were losers and ungodly. And we really have not had one godly, Jesus Christ honoring, Bible loving, stand up, rebuke sin uh, president. I got something else to tell you. 
You know, we speak about it. You probably don't even know today because you, you, the pastors don't know history. In the days of the great revivals that hit America, there was no presidency. George Washington's presidency came long after the Great Awakening. I did that search one day. I wanted to see what presidents were during the Great Awakening and what happened to them during the Great Awakening. And I was quite amused to find the fact is there was no presidency yet. The Lord will give strength unto his people. Well, here are the Jews. Oh, he gives strength unto us too. He gives his armament. The Bible says in uh, 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 Ephesians chapter 6, I believe. Well, that's strength. And it gives you a whole military armament to, to get suited up and used properly. The Lord will bless his people with peace. That's the millennium. And that's eternal, the new earth. Solomon had peace, yes, but that wasn't long. What did Solomon's peace end with? How did it end? Him forsaking all the, uh, the Lord and going after all the gods of his wives? Now, it's recorded. I've been told. I never checked it myself, but they say that the only other time there's been peace on this earth, when Solomon was ruler, this, there, there wasn't peace everywhere. There was peace in Jerusalem. And in Judea, but they're saying that when Jesus Christ was on this planet, there was worldwide peace. And they're saying that there, there's a gate over there in Israel, I guess. I don't know much. That this gate is shut or open during peacetime. And whether it's shut or open, I don't know. It's, they say it's only happened a very few times where there was actually worldwide peace. But that's. Listen, you can have worldwide peace today and have a church being split up. You can have worldwide peace today and have a family going to be broken up. You can have worldwide peace and have the Democrats fight the Republicans, the Republicans fight the Democrats on uh, Capitol Hill. That's not peace. That's not worldwide peace. And in the millennium, that worldwide peace, as you've got Jesus Christ sitting in Jerusalem as the king, the prince David, the 12 thrones of the apostles of the Lamb, and Bible-believing Christians that did what they were supposed to and did not deny the Lord Jesus Christ, giving cities to reign. What is peace then? When someone breaks the law, they're a march right to one of us. And if it's serious enough, we bring it to one of the apostles. And if it's serious enough, they bring it to the prince. And if it's very serious enough, the prince brings it to Jesus. And Jesus will tell you go, where the hell is going to be down the, the Dead Sea. He will go tell you to go jump in the lake. There's peace. Peace will be when, when somebody arises, Jesus will put him in his place like a fire. You know, somebody came to Jesus and said, Hey, well, my brother, you tell him to split the inheritance with me. That's, that wasn't Jesus' time yet. What will be the peace uh, in the millennium? It's when they come to one of us or the apostles or the prince or Jesus and say, hey, Listen, I have a case here. Well, what did Paul say? You don't take your case to the, to the ungodly judge. Take it to the church. Find the most simpleton in the church and let him hear it and figure it out. That's us. We're going to be selling disputes on this planet. And there, there are going to be problems to arise. I mean, whatever it be. Things are going to happen. And look, look through the Bible. Look through the Old Testament. You are to adhere to that judge and what he says. We'll be part of the peace practice without the United Nuts. And that's just something to be all over the Lord Jesus Christ. It, again, give God the praise. Bless his name. Glory to his name is when the Lord Jesus Christ will set up the peace. Using us as, as witnesses. Using us as vessels. 
Glory to God's name when someone calls upon the Lord Jesus Christ as their Savior, gives them peace in their life, they're not going to hell no more. God used us for the glory. Yeah, I may have planted, I may have watered, but the Bible says God gave the increase. I didn't do nothing. Don't put no notches in my belt. Because there are people out there who are getting saved with something I've done. And I don't even know. But God's getting the glory. So that's Psalms 29. We close. Oh Lord my God, when I in awesome wonder consider all the worlds thy hands have made, I see the stars, I hear the rolling thunder. Thy power throughout the universe displayed. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. And when I think that God his Son not sparing sent him to die, I scarce can take it in. That on the cross my burden gladly bearing he bled and died to take away my sin. Then sings my soul.